G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle. Recently, uh, I've done quite a lot of videos about the Dark Angels units, some different tanks, that kind of thing that have come out. Gone through uh, the points values, the stats, uh, and compared them to other units and said how, you know, some things are really points efficient, some things really aren't, uh, and where I see a few problems arising because of this. What I want to do today is come up with... It's a rational way of building units, and this is essentially how it's done for a game to try and create balance. And through doing this, we can kind of get a rough semblance of what something should cost. Now, it's not a perfect system, and there's a lot of... Uh, you need to tweak things here and tweak things there in order to achieve a certain goal, but we'll go through that as it becomes relevant, and this hopefully will give people an idea of just what goes into creating something like a Space Marine stat line for the game. So, first thing you've got to know is we have our generic profile here and the points value for it. Below that, we have the new profile we're going to be putting in and the points value for that. Down here is the positive and negative points modifiers. So every time we increase the stat of something, positive or negative, what it's going to do is it's going to then take that and modify our points over here for the unit and by modifying those points for the unit what you're going to end up with is hopefully something close to what it should fairly cost for the game now modifiers that might change this might be if it's a core troops choice for example you might make it a bit cheaper because you want to encourage people to take more of it but if it's something like a super elite unit maybe make it more expensive to, you know, really ram home the point that it is a super elite unit. So, we're going to go with that for a start. Second, down the bottom we have generic gun, which is this set of stats here, and this points value. We also have generic super gun, which is going to be this set of stats that will go across here, and its new points value, with the same set of negative modifiers and positive modifiers, I should add. So, let's make a start. If we go for a standard Space Marine stat line across the board here, we've made zero modifiers either way, so nothing here is going to be added. But let's say I make a uh, Centurion, for example. Well, we're gonna upgrade a couple of these stats. So what have we done? Well, we'll add a point for our increase in these stat lines. These will be remaining the same. And of course, because he's going to be an independent character, we're going to give him say, well, let's, let's go with the independent character special rule so we'll add a few points for that on the end there and maybe we'll say something like an extra wound is really worth more than one point so let's make that worth at least five points because that's a really good thing to have uh, the extra tax yeah that adds up in value so again maybe it's not worth one point for each extra attack Let's say it's worth three points for each extra attack. The extra leadership, that's not worth much. The extra weapon skill, not worth much. The extra ballistic skill, not worth much unless you have a really good weapon to use it on. Uh, and the best thing this guy's going to get is a combi bolter, maybe a combi plasma. So it's not really worth that much. So just for independent character and those stat changes, we get something around the 32 point mark. I think that would be pretty acceptable for a... Centurion, but a Centurion in 30k is 50 points. Keep in mind, there's no Artificer Armor, Refractor Field, anything like that to start with on the independent character. Uh, so, um, it, it could be overpriced in the scheme of 30k. I think a stock Centurion is overpriced. But let's start with a clean slate. Let's, uh, let's try and make something like an Angel's Tears Marine. So all these are going to be the same. 
But I do believe they're an extra point of leadership. And they've got three plus armor. Okay, so nothing crazy here. But they're going to have counterattack. They're also going to have uh, rad grenades. I should left block this. What else do they have? Uh, they all have jump packs built in. They all have two Volkite pistols. Even though it's not special rules, I'll just write it here. What else do they have? Void Hardened. And they have an additional close combat weapon and pistol. Okay. So we're not going to have any modifiers for these lines here until we get to the leadership. So in our leadership, we're going to go, all right, got an extra point of leadership here on the average guy. Eh, nothing too crazy, 13 points. So now we've got to decide what these other things down here are all worth. So close combat weapon and a pistol. Well, it's an extra attack, so it's worth a little bit more, as we say. So we'll give that two point rise there. Two Volkite pistols. Well, I believe they're three points a pop, so straight away we're going to have to add in six over here. But what we'll do is we'll put it under ballistic skill because it's related to their shooting. So we'll say six up here. Okay. Void hardened. Well, that improves the save dramatically because you get to re-roll all your armor saves against blasts and templates. So let's add two points a model down here. All right, they're all jump infantry. What's a jump pack cost? Well, wow, it's, what, 10, 15 points for an independent character. This is just an average squad. So, so let's just go five points, okay? So call that five. And then you go, all right, rad grenades, 10 points for a squad, so that's one point per model. We'll up that to six. And they've got counter attack, which is a very good rule. We'll call that worth two, just Arbitrary numbers I'm plucking out of thin air here. So what we end up with for an Angel's Tier Marine is this stat line here, and that points cost. Currently in the game, they cost 15 points. Now, is 31 points correct for the squad? No, it's not. Instead, what you would do is you go, okay, this is a Marine squad in power armor. I wouldn't halve it but I definitely would knock off about 10 points and you'd end up somewhere around the 21 points. And this is the subjectivity part of it. What adding points together will do is give you a rough idea of what something should look like when you get to the end of it. So, all right, let's start another one. Let's try um, Inner Circle Knight Cenobium, these bad boys here. Weapon skills five, ballistic skills four. Leave strength and toughness at both four. Yep, one wound, their initiative is four, two attacks, leadership is nine base, and they've got two plus saves. Okay, special rules. Well, they've all essentially got character. So I would say character. What else have we got? Uh, stubborn, Adamantium Will, Orders Exemplars. Plasma Caster. Tyrannic Great Swords. Okay, anything else? Oh, they've got the cataphracty armor, I suppose. So we'll factor that into our sheet now. All right, so let's see. Increased point of weapon skill. No ballistic skill increase. 
No strength increase, no toughness increase, no wounds increase, no initiative increase. Extra attack, there's our two points. Leadership, one extra point. Armor saves, okay. What points would you make going for a three plus to a two plus? Well, you will save about, well, it's one sixth more. Um, of your total wounds, I'd say you're probably looking somewhere around the five points a model to go up to a two plus save realistically. Uh, it is strong, but it's not as strong as people sometimes put emphasis on because there is a lot of stuff that is AP2 out there. So we'd call that maybe five points and then the four plus is vulnerable save, that'd be another 10. So I'll comfortably call this 15 points here. Okay, nothing too crazy. So we've now reached the points of a basic Terminator, essentially. So obviously I'm pretty close with my guess here on points. The stock Legion Terminator is 31. We've got this. So special rules. I'm going to start with a negative here, which is they're not scoring. And I think that's kind of a big deal. So let's go minus five points there. Just check my maths on this. Hmm. Should take it away, but it looks like it's added it on. There we go. Okay, so we've got our points across the board here now. Minus five because they're not a scoring unit. But let's figure out what we give them. So character, call that two points. The ability for everyone to have precision shots, except challenge, charge, that kind of thing is important. But again, it's not true character. It's a in close combat they have the character special rule. No, no, I was wrong. It is just true character. Okay. So everyone has precision shots, precision strikes, that kind of thing. Let's call that two points a model. Everyone's got adamantium will, great special rule. It's going to make the unit really hard to kill with psychers or target with psych abilities. Two points there. Orders exemplars. Well, it's going to be different for every army, but it's uh, brutally strong versus a whole bunch of different armies. So what do you do for points there? I'd call it uh, just a flat five. Because again, the ability to make every model so incredibly strong is not to be underestimated. And a Tyrannic Greatsword, they're adding to the unit. Well, that's 20 points right there. Is it worth 20 points on one of these guys? Mm, no, it's probably only worth about 15. So we'll just call it a flat 20 on our special rules currently. Well, we're already up to 46 points a model, which is one point more. But there's something we haven't factored in yet. And that is the Plasma Caster. So let's go down to our weapons here and we'll try and figure out what that should be. So the range, what? Well, it's poor. The strength, it's the same. The AP, it's fantastic. And I think it's an assault weapon, is it not? Assault two. Special rules, ignores cover, reroll, overwatch. All right, so negative here, half our weapon range. I reckon that's a huge deal. So we're gonna take away two points there. So we're minus, two, oops. Minus two. All right, uh, strength is exactly the same. So no change there. Don't know why this is in bold. AP. AP2 compared to AP5 is huge. Do you go just the three points for the fact you've gained three over it? No. It seems to be an average of going through a plasma weapon, for example, seems to be about two points per AP value and two points per strength value on most weapons. So two points per AP, six points right there. Assault. Assault is just better than rapid fire. We'll just call it one. Now our special rules. Ignores cover. That's a big deal. We'll say that's 
Oh, it's an AP2 weapon. It's, if an AP5 weapon ignores cover, it's very different to an AP2. So this is the subjective territory again. We'll go two points there, and it gets to reroll Overwatch. Mm, a huge deal in Zone Mortalis, not in the average game. Split the difference, we'll call that two. So we'll make it a total of four points difference. We come up with a points value of 12 for the Plasma Caster. So let's factor that in, we'll add 12. We end up with 58 points per model. So now we look at the Inner Night Circle Knight Cenobium. Do we think 58 points is fair for this unit? Well, what do you get over a regular Legion Terminator? Well, essentially, you're getting all this over a regular Legion Terminator. That's why your points are going up so high, even with your negative modifiers on things. So... Just going to modify that to put it all in the positives. Alright. 58 points for one of these is probably pretty fair in reality. So, they're one less attack and one less wound and one less initiative than a Space Marine Centurion. Keep in mind, a Space Marine Centurion is 50 points. But over a Space Marine Centurion, they're gaining Stubborn, Adamantium Will, the Order's Exemplar, their Plasma Caster, and the Tyrannic Greatsword. Just putting Terminator armor on a Legion Centurion would cost more than 8 points. It's 20 points off the top of my head, in fact. So I would say this is probably actually a pretty fair points cost for an Inner Circle Knight Cenobium. 58 points a model. And, and this is how you work out what the rough points of something should be. And this is the process I go through in my head whenever I look at any unit and judge whether I think it's good or bad. Now again, there's some subjectivity to this. Maybe a unit is better viewed in isolation than it is in reality because it's only as good as the supporting units around it. Other times you'll have something like um, a unit that might seem a bit mediocre on the surface, but then there might be a particular item of war gear you can give them which dramatically changes how they perform. And if you, you might have the base points cost of the unit correct, but then you've got to factor in an additional points cost for that crazy item of war gear. So these are the sort of things you have to think about. And what I think is happening at the moment is they're not applying this logic of the increasing points, decreasing points, that kind of thing for their units over at Forge World. When they're creating new units, what they seem to be doing at the moment is they're going, all right, what do we like here? What do we think this should be just based on where it fits some sort of niche in the points as opposed to actually trying to balance it? And this isn't trying to get perfect balance either because you might take something like a generic fighting person up the top here, a standard marine stat line, and you go, well, actually, it might be worth less than 12 points. Maybe it's only worth 10 points if you put in a tactical squad because you want to encourage people to take tactical squads. And there's another thing you might do with points, which is where you go, I want to make this unit to be taken in big numbers. So say a, um, again, we'll use a Legion Tactical Squad, if you know it's not exactly true. You might say, uh, increase the base points of the unit, but then make each additional member cheaper. So a person will see that it's much cheaper to go for 20 Marines in one squad than two squads of 10 Marines. Because the initial buy-in is more expensive, but the additional units are cheaper. And these are different ways you can sort of gently nudge players in the direction of taking something in your game. But this is not what's happening right now. Um, what we can also do is have a bit of fun here and just try out some uh, some different stat lines. Um, let's try a less than super fighting person. Uh, what if they're something like militia? Okay, so 12 points for our space marine. Let's start with the negatives. Minus one, minus one. Nice one, nice one, nice 
minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus four. Well, I don't know why I put a minus in there. Yeah, I'd buy that. <laughs> um, I don't know why I did minus ones across the board there when I didn't modify everything. So, would four points for a Wazgun armed militia soldier compared to a Space Marine be fair? Yeah, probably in the scheme of things. You're going to get three of those for every one Marine, and three of those probably can kill one Marine. But do remember that one Marine with his shooting is going to be instant killing a few of them. So, you know, again, it's not the perfect system. This is just a guide to how you do this sort of thing. And again, weapons, special rules, that kind of thing, that, that is all something that's subjective for what it's worth. But a great rule of thumb I like to use is I look at what a unit's uh, loadout is on different infantry units, and I look at characters who have different items of war gear, and I try and use that as a rough starting point. And if I go, all right, this character's got, um, he's got something like uh, a power fist. All right, it's 20 points for an independent character. What should it be for a standard space marine? Well, you might say he's half as effective as a character, less attacks and such. Maybe it's 10 points. Then, oh, it's an awesome special weapon that you're putting on just a generic guy, giving you a much better generic guy. Maybe it should be 15 points made halfway in the middle. So anyway, this is the rough how and why you points price things and work out what something is worth in the game. Now, doesn't mean I'm fully correct in my assumptions. No, not at all. As I say, everything's subjective. But this is roughly how you can modify something, make your own characters, that kind of thing, and say, okay, what should I roughly be in the ballpark of for points, for rules, that kind of thing. And if your numbers are absolutely crazy high or crazy low, that's where you might start applying a bit of subjectivity. Um, but generally, I find this system, this method works really, really well with the figures I plug in um, and my reasoning why. As you saw, I, as pretty much as soon as I plugged in a Terminator stat line and picked some rough points for what I think it would be worth, we ended up with uh, a Terminator that was basically the cost of a Legion Terminator. Like, it's amazing like that, how it just works. Anyway, I'm back with the Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully, I've shown you a bit of uh, how and why I critique models the way I do for their rules. Uh, I'm, I'm using a very... What's the what's the term to use here, I'm wondering? Um, not objective. Maybe a very technical solution to the problem. Because again, there is no right and wrong way to do this. But there is obviously times, like with, say, Angel's Tears or Inner Circle Knight Synovium, where, where the points blow out is a lot. And you start saying to yourself, hmm, you know, maybe, just maybe, they got the points wrong on this. And this is my way of sort of confirming my assumptions. But I'm not doing it with a spreadsheet usually, I'm doing it in my bare head. <laughs> anyway, I'm back with the Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching. Please leave your thoughts and feedback below. Uh, let me know if you think I was crazy wrong in my assumptions. Uh, and I'll see you all next time.